السلام عليكم جميعا uh, first of all I want to uh, uh, welcome our guest those who are from outside of Bahrain whether from the Gulf or from outside of the Gulf for the expats welcome to Bahrain and we wish you good time in Bahrain inshallah Two, I, uh, it, uh, it is a good thing to see ladies around. So men, you be careful. Ladies are attacking very fast these days in the HSE sector. Now we have only five ladies, but I think uh, maybe by next, next conference you will see more of the ladies around. Uh, I'll try to make it very short and very precise. I will not repeat everything what my, uh, my colleague said about uh, uh, human factors, statistics, and numbers, and all that. But I will use that to reach my point. Before I, I, I start, if, uh, if, if I may know, like how many people from maintenance background, if they can raise your hand, maintenance background. Operation background, wow. Technical background, good, good. All right. The one step ahead concept. What Hafid said, I started in, in GPIC uh, in 1990, but I started the maintenance. So I can feel exactly what maintenance people is, is thinking about when they go to do the job. And I know exactly what operation are dealing with when maintenance people bothering them every day to do the job. And I understand the technical service people when they are, they think they are the most clever people in the world. But you put all these together, you are the industrial factors that linked each other to make a safe environment at the end of the day. The target is or the concept that I'm talking about today is one step ahead concept. When we, uh, or when I took over the safety department, I started reading about so many statistics with, uh, with OSHA, with uh, in, in US, in UK, and, and so many information came on, but all of them, they talk about the same thing, numbers number of fatalities, number of injuries, number of so and so, and they, and they attributed that for, if we shortlisted them, they shortlisted them to these four. Either training, human error, improper, improper maintenance, and manufacturing defects. I will add one thing to it, the system is also part of it. The procedures, as my colleague from India said, as part of it, SOPs, SI, guidelines, every company that we talk about here, your organization, have all these in hand. You have all the procedures in the world, you have all the standards in the world, and you have everything there. Then why we have uh, fatalities? Why we have people killed? Why we have people lost their uh, lives? We have injuries. People come with 10 fingers, they and they come back out with nine. Why we accept that? Where we, we know that most of the st statistics talks about human error. Let's, let's focus a little bit about human error. Dr. Ahmed Al-Hazmi told me yesterday, the Arab world, when they do root cause investigation, if they reach one dead end, most of them, they will come to the human error. And yes, it is for a fact, it is a human error. The best procedure in the world will not save you. The best guideline, the best standard, the best ISO will not save lives. It is a human who are dealing with people in the, in the ground. So, so what OSHA says, all these are the top 10. Name it, whether these are from the industrial sector, general sector, or construction. And I know I was talking to Hussein earlier when he visited in the construction and in the Ministry of, of, of Labor. The highest incident rate in the construction is scaffolding. 
most of the death, most of the fatalities happen, and, this, and these are statistics for 2016 uh, uh, published in OSHA site. The highest rate of fatalities in the construction is a scaffolding. Now tell me, you maintenance people, like how many scaffolding activities in your plant? Anything more than 1.2 meter, scaffolding is a must, and this is, and this is the standard. And it can go to, like the highest column you have in your plant is what? 50 meter, 60 meter height column? Imagine scaffolding from the ground going all the way up 60 meter. That scaffolding can remain there for a week, two, a month, and every company has a procedure, scaf tag, scaf inspection, scaf so and so. But all of that is to ensure that the scaffolding is safe for people to climb on it and do the job. Okay, this is fair, this is good, because all the companies, they have their procedures, and all of us, we think we are the best. Everybody says my company is bulletproof system. Nobody will come and say, no, I have lousy company, no. We have the best company, we have the best procedure, we have the best guidelines, we have the best competent people, and so go on and on and on and on. But still we have fatalities. Still we have people killed in, in, in one of these activities. Activities are what? When the plant is running, it needs maintenance. When the plant is running, operation people is there. When the plant is running, contractors are there. So you have a human being jumping up and down from maintenance, from operation, and from contractor, and from everywhere to maintain your plant running. So we are dealing with people, guys. We are not dealing with a black and white procedure. What are we doing for the people? We talked about a preventable accident. And the factor of a human factor being important part of it you cannot take human out of every single equation that we talked about. But let's see what is the preventable accident is. I'll give you seconds to read that. I, I hate to put too much words, and this is the maximum wording I'm putting in this slide. But this is the dictionary I took from the site. I highlighted the important uh, words only to pull your attention to it. If you want to avoid, or if you want, or, or if you are aiming to stop the accident, you need to plan and prepare and act to avoid or stop accident before it happens. And the word here is before. The best practice that I will be talking to you about is how you can take that one step ahead to be before the accident happened or before the people. Who are your stakeholders if you want to do the job? Maintenance people, operation people, and contractor. How you want to be one step ahead of them? Things, things, things doesn't go without, without a human being. We've seen, we've seen airplane without pilot. You think there is no pilot there? No, you are wrong. Because there are four people sitting in the ground operating this airplane in the air. So the, there are human beings operating this airplane from somewhere in the world. I'm not a, a military man, this is only an example. But if you know your stakeholders, maintenance people, operation people, contractor, trainees, visitor, how you want to be one step ahead of those people, how you can, you can set the best system you have, but still you want to be one step ahead. One step ahead, you need information. Giving the best practice that we do in GPIC, of course, like, like every other maybe uh, uh, companies, you have the planning schedule. We have the weekly planning schedule. We know exactly what's going to be executed from Sunday to Thursday. We have daily planned status issued report from the senior shift supervisor at seven o'clock in the morning. We have the number of people entering the complex of course, everybody, everybody enter with access control, and those ladies, the trainees that were in GPIC earlier, they know exactly in which part of that access control that system will count you in. 
And of course, at the end of the day, all the jobs carried out in the plant with permit to work. And the top of that, we meet every day, eight o'clock, to discuss the status of the plant, taking into account the weekly program, taking the plant status, taking the people in the plant, and all these are information. These are massive information that you can make sense of them. Taking, taking out when we said, let's, let's focus and be one step ahead. Based on the first two slides I said in the statistics, scaffolding is one thing. We, in the industry, we have these top four permit to work. Hot work permit is something that we should be scared of. Oil and gas is not a joke. Oil and gas, if there's a leak from a valve, if there's a leak from a flange, if there's a leak from union, it is red, red, very, very high red alarm. Then we have a hot work permit to ensure that the work is safe and people can work and do hot work. Yeah? Okay. Lifting. If you think lifting is something simple, then believe me, you are wrong. Every time lifting activities goes on in your plant, you should be in the top of your toes watching that lifting activities and make sure that that lifting activities is carried out safely. Scaffolding we talked about because scaffolding is one of the major concern in the industry, whether it is construction or uh, industrial. Of course, when the plant is running, there is very minimum confined space permit is given. But confined space could be not only uh, a man way through uh, that, that, that a confined space of equipment, but could be confined space in a lower elevation, could be confined space in tanks or, or otherwise. These four permits to work that we focus on GPIC in addition to the others, but we give more emphasis on these four uh, permits every day. So what we do in safety, we assign people. One person, when he comes, of course, the, the safety team, he started his shift, and especially in the morning shift, he doesn't know exactly in which plant he will end up with. Mr. A, Today, you will be in ammonia and methanol plant. Mr. B, you will be in utility. Mr. C, you will be in methanol or, or in urea plant. Assigning people to plant, putting that person responsible to do what? To take care of these permits, number one. Audit them, permit audit, risk assessment audit, job hazard audit, and we say, when we say audit, it is HSE audit. It is not only safety, by the way. He's responsible to be there before the maintenance reaches a plant. We are giving him the ownership at the end of the day, that person ownership for one day that the jobs carried out and that plant that he's assigned to carried out safely. Because when, th when anything is happening around that plant, he's the first person who's gonna be called out and said, Mr. X, I need assistant. I, I said something here, uh, I missed it, I said, a service provider uh, in, in one of the slides. But in the concept that we started in 2010, safety is not red overall or red helmet and walking the plant and scaring people. No, not at all. Safety person is a service provider. And I will say this again. If you think that if you the operation, if you the maintenance need help, you should call safety people. He is there to serve you to make sure that your job is carried out safely and the contractor knows exactly what to do safely and the job ends up safely. So he is number one responsible in his assignment of his plant to ensure that the people carried out their job safely. I will not take much more on that. The concept is ongoing. Ownership concept, delivery concept, non-routine concept, and it is always one step ahead of you people, the operation, the maintenance, and the technical service. Thank you very much. Thank you.